Hey everybody, James with Love My Pods, My Brilliant Supply. All right, so this is kind of ties into this whole genetics thing. And this is gonna be a little talk about probability. And lots of you know this back to front, so for those of you, switch off and do something else. But there's quite a few of you who are confused generally about probability. It does play such an important part in genetics. And I don't think I've really talked about it in any great detail. So we're gonna cover just probability and, and, and how you work out probabilities and why you can get misled by it. Okay, so let's just start off with such a simple thing, flipping a coin. So you've got a coin and it's got two sides to it. And this side we're gonna call heads. And you know what? It would have been probably a bit cleverer if I'd have made this a different color. So we'll just make that one a red one. So you've got two, you've got a coin, same coin, and the coin has, uh, obviously it's got two sides, and here's the other side, and this is gonna be the tail side. So that's tails, and that's heads, right, okay. So we're assuming this is a fair coin. A fair coin would be one that is not biased, it hasn't been mucked around with. If you flip it lots of times, you'd expect to get an equal number of heads and tails, that would be a fair coin, okay. So, <clears throat> When you flip a coin, there are potentially two possible outcomes. Well, I guess there's a third one. It could land on its side. We're not going to consider that one. We can consider that we flip a coin and it lands on the table and we look at it and we then got to look at it as it either be heads or it could be tails. So the first one would be, what is the probability that if you flip a coin that it ends up being heads? So this is something that I think the majority of people intuitively know that the answer is 50% it would be, it would be heads. So, but how do you work that out? So that's the question we're gonna work on here. So what you always do in probabilities is you work out what all the possible outcomes are, and that is 100%, and then you look and see how many versions there are of that 100%, and that gives you the probability. So, if you flip these type coins, what can you get? You can either get a head or a tail. That's it, with the one on the side, we're not considering that. So there it is, it's a head or a tail. So those are the two outcomes, and the outcomes of all the probabilities has to be 100%. And since we know that this is a fair coin, then 50% of the time we'd expect to get a head, and 50% of the time that we'd be expect to get a tail. So there you go, you know, it's, it's a probability of a half, or 50%, and then it all adds up to one, or 100%. No, straightforward stuff. Nothing, nothing here that's too revolutionary, I don't think. All right, so, so now the next question gets to be, and this is the one I run into quite a lot, where people, I got one today. Somebody had actually bred a fluffy carrier to their fluffy dog, and they were disappointed because they got no fluffy carriers at all when it came back from animal genetics. And because of that, their assumption was, was that animal genetics had screwed up, or that somebody had switched studs on and they got the wrong dog. So the, the point here that you've got to think about is, is, when you start looking at probabilities of whether a, head, a coin is going to turn up a heads or a tail, there is no guarantee that if you threw that coin five times, that you'd get, or six times, that you'd get an equal number of heads and tails. You would ex certainly ex think that would be reasonable, but it's certainly not guaranteed. There's nothing in the universe that decides exactly when you flip a coin, whether that will be a head or a tail. If there was, we'd all be gambling and making lots of money at Las Vegas. Because you it's, it's not what's called a conditional probability. You don't know what the outcome's gonna be until after the fact. And so this is the really interesting part about probability. It's to do with, you know, get, do this experiment. Go get yourself a jar with 20 coins in it. Shake the jar up and throw it out on the table and count the number of heads and tails that you see. And what would you expect to see? Well, you expect to see approximately 10 heads and approximately 10 tails. But if you do that experiment enough times, and by the way, it's a double crap load of times, there'll be a time where they all come out heads and you don't get a single tail in it, and vice versa, they're all tails and not a head in it. And by the way, if you want to work out the probability of that with 10 coins, the probability of the first coin, if they're going to all be heads, would be a half. We already worked that out. The probability of the next coin is a head is a half. And so this goes on. 
So the probability that you can throw and get 10 heads in a row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, is a very freaking small number. It is one half to the 10th power. And if you work that out, that's a half times a half is a quarter, is a 16th, is a, uh, no, let's, let me get this right here, is a half, is a quarter, is an eighth, is a 16th, a 32, is a 64th, 120, 256, 512, 1024. One in 1,024 times, you could expect to get all of those coming out as heads. So you can, so that's another important point here. When you start working out probabilities of multiple things happening together, you multiply the probability together. Okay. So I'm gonna actually, do, we're gonna do some real world examples with, with dogs here in a moment. But I wanna bring up another point here as well, and that is the difference between posterior probabilities, something that is conditional about something else happened first. So I'm gonna give you an example here of how the outcome that happened can influence the next, the next event that happens. <clears throat> so here's an example. You've got a mason jar, and I just wiped over the place where I just put this stuff, you already work, but you've got a mason jar. And in that mason jar, you have three red balls, and you have three blue balls. And you can't see it, you put your hand in there and you pull one out, what's the probability that you're gonna get a red ball comes out? And the answer is, is that since there's an equal number of reds and blues, it is a half or 50%. Again, relatively obvious. That's the first go out, that's the first, that's the first draw. Okay. So now the next question is, after you've taken that ball out and there, there are now, the red ball is gone, what's the chance that you now pull a red ball on the next go? And that is not as obvious. But the answer, the secret to this is, is that since you've lost a red ball, it's quite obvious when you think about it, the chances of you getting a red ball out next is, is a little bit less than you're getting a blue ball. If you pulled out a red ball successfully, the chances that the next ball would be red again are getting even smaller. In fact, they're one in four. And if you were lucky enough to pull a red ball again, and then somebody asks you, what's the chance of you pulling another red ball out? Well, the answer is zero. There's no red balls left. That is assuming that you do know the conditions for the start of this whole exercise, that you know how many red and, and uh, red and blue balls there were in there. Okay. so. The point I want to make here is this is a conditional probability. The condition of the next event is based on what previously happened. It's got nothing to do with genetics. All genetics that I can think of, they are all random events and the previous, the previous one does not affect of what the likely outcome is of the next event. Okay, so let's talk now about specifics. Um, well, let's talk about, this is an interesting one. Let's talk about uh, the number of males and female puppies that you can expect to get in the litter. So the first thing is, is you've got to know what determines what the sex of a puppy is. And this is a kind of an interesting one because it's certainly not what you'd think it would be if you didn't know this. So the female has two chromosomes and they are X and Y. The male has two chromosomes and they're always XX. And if you get a girl or a female, let's just call it a female because it's kind of a bit more appropriate than a girl. If you get a female puppy, then that is always XX and a male puppy is XY. So remember, this is not the sex of this dog. This is the genetic, this is the available genes that this dog can give out. Okay, so it's kind of interesting because if you do a Punnett square on this, so the Punnett squares, by the way, you could do that with the, with the head toss, with the coin tossing, and we might just do that in a moment. So we've got the female on the top. And remember, she has two genes she can give out, and we have the male on the side, and he has two XX genes he can give out. What's the possibilities? Well, there's an XX that gets to be a female. 
Here's an XY that gets to be, so we'll put this down here, female. There's a male. There's an XX that gets to be a female, and an XY and that gets to be a male. So there you can see, you've got two males out of four, and you've got two females out of four, or basically, half of them will be males, and half will be females. So we could have done that with a Punnett square, or we could just done it by looking at what the possibilities that you could have. So let's just get rid of that, and we'll do it the other way. So that's the Punnett square way, which we do use a lot in genetics. <clears throat> So the other way to look at this is, what are all the possible outcomes you could have got? Well, you could have an XX, you can have an XX, you can have a YX, you can have a YX. So, and we drew this, we'll just, I'm sorry, we're gonna do this the other way around, because it's gonna be a bit confusing, XY, XY. So there's four possible outcomes, of which two of those outcomes end up being males, and two of those outcomes end up being females. So there is your two out of four or half of females and a half of males. I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, it, it, when you see it this way, hopefully it all makes sense to you. So, <clears throat> we're about down here. It'll be a short little video, let's get rid of this. So let's just look at this slightly differently. And now we're gonna talk about, so the thing that gets people confused is when they have a number of these multiple possibilities all coming together. So let's look at a litter that you have of four puppies. And we're gonna talk again about the sex of puppies. What would you expect to get? Well, you expect to get two females and two males, right? But if you got all females or you got all males, it wouldn't make you think like something's wrong with the world. So it's no different with that customer of mine who got no fluffy carriers, when they had a 50% chance that every puppy would be a fluffy carrier, they had zero fluffy carriers, that that's not something that's particularly surprising. Right. If we just talk about a litter of two puppies, because it's really, up, the, the, math, the math is a bit more obvious. So, we've got two puppies, two puppies. Again, 50-50, so let's go back to the extremes, and uh, that's not dry yet, so it won't write worth a diddly. Hey, I think you should be able to tell by now that when I do these videos, I don't script them at all. They're just off the top of my head. And so because of that, sometimes we do things that uh, are a waste of your time a little bit. I apologize for that. All right, so two, two, two puppies. What are the possible outcomes that we can have? All right, we can have a female and a female, which is we think is relatively unlikely. We can have a male and a male. Eh, come on, right on me, you silly thing. I've got too much damp on the board. Got a male. Let's try a different pen. Maybe this one will work better. Nope. Oh, darn it. Sorry about this, folks. When they do these nice videos on TV, this is why you don't realize if there's like 20 takes that are going on because the equipment doesn't work right. Come on. There we go. Male and a male. All right, so those are the two extremes, all females, all males. Well, what can we get in the middle? We can get a female and a male, or a male and a female. So the chances of getting a litter of an equal number, remember there's four outcomes, one, two, three, four. The chances of getting two, a litter where you've got an even number of males and females is two out of four or a half. The chances of getting just males is one out of four a quarter, or just females is one out of a quarter. And look, guess what? If you add all this up, it adds up to one. And that tells us our probability calculation is correct. So, you know, just because you think that you're gonna get, a, you know, you put two dogs together that are blue carriers, let's do a Punnett square. This is the last part of it. This is just to try and reinforce what we're talking about here. So we've got two dogs that we bring together. And one of them is a blue dog, which is little d, little d. And the other one is a blue carrier. Little, uh, you always do it the other way, big d, little d. So, you know, if we do the Punnett square, we've got the little d, little d dog on top. We've got the 
big D, little d dog on the bottom. We do the Punnett square, we get this. We get half of them that are blue carriers. And we get half of them that are blue. Right, but the, the point I want to get across here is, is just because that happens, you cannot expect that you will get a litter that is exactly half blues and half blue carriers. You could get all blues, you could get all blue carriers, you can get something in between. And so the, the, the whole point that I'm trying to bring across here is, is the probability is random in nature. And prior to the event, nobody knows what the outcome is going to be. And so don't be surprised when it doesn't fit the genetic statistics correctly. It will do it most of the time, but certainly will not do it all of the time. And especially if you start talking about small samples, you're much, much more likely to have some events that don't look quite right to you. If you take a coin and you flip it a million times, the chance of it coming up exactly 500,000 to 500,000 is pretty damn small. But however, the chances that it comes up damn close to 500,000 or 500,000 is extremely good. And I think that's the takeaway. So hope that wasn't wasting anybody's time. Subscribe to us. A little bit of off the wall stuff here, but hopefully it was useful to you. Um, love my pups. Great place for stud dogs. My breeder supply, we have all kinds of products that will make you be successful with the litters. And I think the understanding of probability. You know, I'm gonna add one more thing to this. So here's the thing, I think that this is why probability is really something that people need to get a handle on because there's so much confusion. I'll give you an example. Some people are deathly scared about flying on a plane. All right. Anytime there's a plane accident, it's on the news, it's horrific. The whole idea about getting in a plane and crashing in a fiery ball is horrendous. However, there are thousands of accidents, deadly accidents every week in the United States that involve cars. And one third of those involve texting and driving. So the point here is, which should you be more concerned about? Getting in a car with somebody who's texting and driving or getting in a plane and flying to some other part of the world? And the answer is flying in the plane is extremely safe and very unlikely that you'll have a problem. Of course you could, but it's very unlikely. Texting and driving with somebody uh, is extremely dangerous and got a fairly decent chance. Like if you did, you know, a few hundred trips, you've got a darn good chance that you're going to be in some kind of bad accident. So you've got to put probabilities together in your head as to what you think likely things are. I think it's a it's a such an important thing to get a handle on. And if you don't, then I mean you should be learning a little bit more about it because it's all part of your everyday life, not just breeding dogs. Hey, I've rambled on way too long. Thanks for watching. Bye.